Okay, so it's very nice to be here. Uh, I'm not Alex, for those of you who were wondering. <laughs> uh, Alex happens to be my colleague, my co-worker. Uh, we work for the same publishing company, Macmillan Education. Are you all familiar with Macmillan Publishing? Good. Do you like the books? <laughs> Instant poll here. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not promoting any books today, right? So today I'm going to give you this... Uh, talk on gamification. It's a very introductory one. Don't expect it to be like advanced gamification. It's just gamification for dummies. So I'm going to cover the basics today. I want you to learn more about the concepts, the very uh, basic details so that you can start to implement a little bit of gamification, start to gamify your classes, maybe have uh, a better experience with your students, especially millennials, right? The ones that are younger, that tend to be more like tacky, uh, game addicts, right? Uh, yeah, so I've been working for Macmillan for four years now. Uh, like I said, we, were, we are a team, so I'm repla re replacing Alex. Uh, you don't know him, right? So it's you don't you didn't expect him to be here. That's good, because I, I maybe because he has a fan base, like a large fan base. So I was afraid maybe you're gonna have some Alex's fans here. They're gonna be oh, it's not Alex. <laughs> so it's good. It's a fresh start for all, all of us. So okay, without further ado, let's talk about gamification. So I like this dramatic introduction for my presentation. For those of you, do you have any trackies here? Any any Star Wars fans or? sci-fi fans, right? So you kind of feel it now. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk a little bit about games, gamification per se. Uh, we're also covering uh, the basics on gaming, serious or applied gaming, uh, game-based learning or GBL, uh, theory of fun, uh, yeah, games versus play. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about ad tech, educational technology. I think Fernando that uh, talked previously, he covered a lot of that in his talk. So we're going to explore that further. Uh, and there's Mr. Darth Vader that wants you to stay tuned <laughs> to the end. It's going to be an hour, an hour and a half presentation, so bear with me for a while. It, I, I, I'm expecting you to have some fun and to participate a little bit. I want to hear your opinions. Are you all teachers here? Good. That's terrific. Amazing. So I want to hear your experiences. Wait, wait. Before we start, uh, what's gaming anyway, right? What's gaming? You've been talking about games, but is there a difference between gaming, games, gamification? Yeah, there's a difference. So the term gaming essentially refers to adding an element of competition or challenge to an individual's learning with some extent of entertainment or fun along the way. So some, right? Remember that word, some entertainment is not supposed to be just fun. Um, Gaming has also a serious side because it's fast becoming a widely used, very popular, very interactive way for children to learn in classrooms today. Agree or disagree? Do you use games in your classes? Who here is pro games? Does anyone here, uh, uh, is anyone here against games? At all, right? Okay, I don't like games. It, it kind of interferes, it gets in the way. Uh, yeah, games can be a powerful tool for us teachers to achieve our educational goals. But let's, let's think about this sentence for a while. Let's analyze it. Gaming is changing the way we learn, it's changing the way we deliver our classes, right? Think, of, think about that for 10 seconds now. So, uh, how? How is that happening, right? So, we, 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 we're talking a lot about educational technology, we're talking about a lot of uh, virtual reality and whatnot. But how is gaming uh, changing the way we teach and the way our students learn? I wish I knew. So, I want you to contribute a little bit. So, who here wants to share? Uh, any experiences that you might have had with your with your students using games? Is it beneficial? What do you think? Anyone? Any volunteers? Or I can pick someone. <laughs> oh, here's one to share a little bit. Come on, don't be shy. You were here before. <laughs> Gaming. So, so who here teach, teaches teens? You? Back there? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, go ahead. Chess. 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 How is that? How come? How how could you how could you uh, get anything out of chess? 
Oh, that's amazing. Really? <laughs> well, but, and that's quite surprising because we tend to uh, see and think of Chaz as something very dull, very boring, and you got to, you know, yeah, he loved it. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, see. So we kind of twist, twist things over by by presenting something that's f interesting for him, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Anyone else? Please. Yeah, there's also cooperation. Yeah, because it doesn't have to be competition all the way, right? You can you can uh, have some cooper cooperative games uh, that people uh, work together to reach uh, an objective, right? To, to to accomplish something. So, and education itself is a social matter, right? So, it, it, it it's it's a it's a matter of working together, right? So that's that's very cool. That's a very good uh, contribution. Anyone else wants to add something? The Mm -hmm. uh, like, objects. like, yeah, like a multidisciplinary questions, right? So yeah, you can, it can, it, it has like uh, no limits, no limits. It, it's it's all about the teacher's imagination, right? So and, and about identifying uh, the area of interest of your students and delivering it to them, right? So you can it ha it can help a lot. I think bottom line here, it can help a lot. So there are some. There are types of games, right? There are those games that are more traditional. And I brought Mrs. Uh, does anyone know her? Know her? <laughs> um, uh, almost. Carol Reed, right? She's an author of one of the our books. Uh, by the way, I'm not promoting the book, but it's a great book <laughs> for activities. It's called 500 Activities for, for the pri Primary Classroom. Here you can find a, an entire section dedicated to games, basically. But you have storytelling, you have many, many other things. Those traditional games, they're often uh, offline or unplugged, which means you can use it wherever you're at. If you have no power, the electricity is off, you can still use those games. They, they, you, we've been teaching using those games for uh, centuries now, right? Uh, chess, you mentioned chess. Chess? Cards! Cards, yeah, I have cards here on my list, of course. So cards, cue cards, board games, those games are offline, unplugged. They're traditional. Right, RPG. Are you all familiar with the the acronym RPG? Have you ever heard of it? Role-playing games. So games, games where I play a part. So I have, uh, for example, I have a role. I'm a knight. Okay, so let's take benefit of my name. So I'm I'm Lancelot the knight. So I'm gonna play the role, and you're like the enemy, or you're you are the the court. You're the king. I don't know. So we can play parts, and that involves. Um, uh, theatrical plays, but also uh, objectives. You can have uh, an objective and a plot, so it's very good. Uh, the paper-based real objects using cards, right? You have, and for car by cards, I mean flashcards, I mean cue cards, you know, imagination, those games that I have, for example, I have to mime something and you have to guess what I'm uh, enacting here, right? So. Those uh, cards are also very traditional. For those games, basically the teacher is responsible for conducting the activity. So the teacher is, is responsible uh, for making the rules clear so that the students can follow. The students don't master the rules. You have to explain uh, all the way so that your students can understand the game and can play, right? Um, and they can be played individually, but they are mu so much more fun when they're played in a group, when they're play played socially, right? We can have more fun and can we can extract uh, the most out of it. 
And as opposed to the traditional games, we have the digital games, right? Uh, I have Mr. Pac-Man to help me out. I, I think you're. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of uh, dates it kind of dates back to the 80s, right? So you're all familiar with Mr. Pac-Man. I'm I'm assuming. <laughs> okay, for those digital games, they are mostly online. They work uh, using a platform that is that is connected to the internet. So you're supposed to have. Uh, internet connection for most of those games we have flash games we have those mm uh, mmo rpgs multi platform rpgs or multi uh, massive massive online rpgs right so you have massive multiplayer online rpgs so many people playing together through the web they're connected. People from all over the world connected, playing the same game. Have you ever heard of it? Minecraft, for example. Minecraft is a, it's a huge trend nowadays. And we have people from all over the world playing simultaneously. They're exchanging ideas. They're assembling their characters. They're uh, creating their worlds, their virtual worlds. And they're exchanging information worldwide right so it's crazy it's crazy and you're supposed to be connected to the internet and you're supposed to have a device an electronic device it can be either a computer a tablet a smartphone and many others but you, you're supposed to be connected right uh, and using your device so uh, it can be video games too have you ever heard of for example xbox or uh, PlayStation, right? So students, they create their avatars. There's another buzzword for you, avatars. You know, we have our physical bodies and we have our representation on the web, on the digital world where we have those avatars. There are uh, kind of dummies that are supposed to resemble uh, us. Uh, they're supposed to have our appearance. So we kind of create our dummies. We use the same type of hair. In my case, I have to uh, wear some goggles, you know, <laughs> some like very thick glasses. Uh, but the point is you have a, a, a virtual representation of you. And that's crazy. Second life, right? That's your digital uh, avatar. So, uh, are you following here, guys? Am I talking nonsense? Okay, let me know, <laughs> because I tend to digress a lot here. So, uh, we use, we l rely a lot on apps, softwares, platforms, etc. Like I said, we have Flash-based games. Have you ever seen those games, online games? For example, we have sites, uh, of Pencil, uh, uh, I have the name in the end of the presentation, but Pencil Students or something like that. We have many, many websites that offer Flash-based games so that you can play with your students if you have a computer pro provided you have internet connections in your classroom. Do you use digital games in your classroom? Is it like an... No? No? O occasionally, maybe? It be, it's difficult, it's quite hard because you have to stop what you're doing and you have to rely on technology and sometimes that can be tricky, right? Relying on technology is not always a good thing because technology plays tricks on us sometimes <laughs> and it kind, of, it kind of interferes, it kind of gets in the way and we cannot teach properly because the computer is not working so sometimes it's better to stick with our analogic, with our books, printed books but occasionally it's good to bring those technologies because they tackle specific, spe specifically sorry, at those digital natives, people that were born after the internet. And we have those uh, kids, especially teens, right? So they were born after the advent of internet. So when we're, they were born, we already have email. We already had email. We had uh, Facebook, right? So they're familiar with that. That's their environment. Oh, okay, so th there's a basic difference here. Remember when I said for traditional games, the teacher was supposed to explain all the rules? Now, the students conduct the, the activity because they are familiar with the platforms, because they know the digital environment. So for those digital games, the students are in charge, right? You're just there to help them out and to direct them to the right 
places, but they they know how to deal with computers, right? Is that isn't that right? They know how to do it. They can teach you how to how to get there, right? They occasionally do that, and they could be played collaboratively, but mostly they are played individually. I'm playing at home by myself, but by the internet, on the internet, uh, on the web, I'm connected to all the other players, right? So you got the idea, you got the difference here? Good, amazing. Now, let's talk a little bit about the element of fun. We talk a lot about games, but games, are educational games supposed to be fun? I don't know. So let's discuss this a little bit. Gaming, it's undeniable that gaming is changing the way we teach, and many teachers, think of you, have witnessed the decrease in attention spans. True? Okay. Over the, their time in the teaching profession. Teachers have had to rethink their strategies and the delivery and timing of lessons to take this into account. Is, it, is that true? Students are becoming less and, and less attentive to your classes. They're paying less attention. Yeah, because uh, everything is changing so fast, right? It's so, it's so uh, dynamic and they, we need our classes to adapt. We need our classes to be more dynamic and by bringing the element of gaming, maybe we can achieve that. Uh, I brought this quote from Leo Buscalia from uh, the University of South, South Carolina, right? Uh, it is paradoxical that many educators and parents still differentiate between a time for learning and a time for play. It, they could be together without seeing the vital connection between them, right? So we have to have fun. We have to make our students have fun while they're learning because that's a key element uh, for um, if you want to achieve, uh, you know, our goal, our educational goals. Good. So um, the opposite of work is not play, is depression. So said Stuart Brown, <laughs> right? And <laughs> I don't know if you remember this guy. I, I'm kind of bringing many references here from The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't want to spook you guys, but uh, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So it's if your class is dull, uh, you're not going you're not going to make your students learn, and that's our main objective. That's why we teach because we want them to learn. We have already already learned. We don't have to learn anything else, but we want our students to learn too, and we want them to. Uh, understand what we're saying we want them to pay attention we want them to be focused and if your classes are boring they're not going to pay attention so how to make how can you make your classes more interesting maybe introducing a little bit of play a little bit of fun okay remember play doh back there back there in the kindergarten when we were kids right play doh we could create animals and objects the circle time when we were all together uh, playing uh, in the board and having fun, having giggles. Uh, the sandbox, right? So we were there, we could create our castles in the sand and they were not supposed to last, but we, we were still having a lot of fun. It sure was fun, right? And it was memorable. So weren't we learning back then? right? Weren't we learning by having fun, by making fun things? We're, we were definitely learning vital uh, pieces of uh, information. We were learning vital uh, information about uh, socializing, about coordination, fine gross motor skills. So many, many things, right? Uh, we were learning. So there's a difference between games and play. Games are distinguished from, from play because play, just play is free form, right? It's, it has no rules underlying. Uh, and games are rule-based. Rule it's a closed formal system that engages players in structured conflict and resolves its uncertainty in an unequal outcome. Uh, Translating, translating it into another, into other words. There will be winners and there will be losers, right? When you're playing games, some people win and some people lose, right? Games are systems built to help us learn patterns. 
and fun is a neurochemical reward to encourage encourage us to keep trying. When we were playing games, we want to get go to the end, right? We want to go we want to get the pot of gold in the end of the rainbow. So we keep on playing because we want to achieve uh, you know our goal. We want to get the prize, right? So we live in the world of systems and we choose whether to make a given system a game or not. Games have externally imposed rules. They have goals, objectives. Uh, and play has freedom from all but personally imposed rules. There are no goals, right? There are just the rules that I want there to be. So there's a difference, basic difference between games and play. And we want to implement games in our classes. We want to have those organized, rule-based systems that we can promote learning through, right? Uh, take a look at this picture. This is what engagement looks like. You see their focus, they have all their attention driven to the screen, they're playing a video game, so they have all their focus, all their attention is on the screen, right? Are they learning? That's a trick question, <laughs> yeah. But, but you were so fast to answer. Yes, they're learning, of course. They're learning, right? Because they're focused, they're focused. Uh, they have a full attention, you know, they have full concentration on a specific sur subject on the target, so they're learning, definitely. And this is, uh, I, I hope you're, your school doesn't look like that, but this is what some schools might look like right uh, and are they learning in this situation no because they're not focused they're not interested they're probably asleep and as far as I know hypnopedia or sleep learning hasn't happened yet I wish I could learn um, in my sleep but I, I can't <laughs> so this is what school looks like so compare the two pictures see we want our students to be like that we want them to be focused and how can we achieve that? See what they're doing here? They're playing video games, right? Because they have objectives. They want to reach the goal. And that's what we want them to feel when they're learning English, Spanish, uh, I don't know, English teachers mostly here, right? But you know, anything. Good. So let's talk about the video gaming phenomenon. And it is a worldwide phenomenon. It's undeniable that is changing the way our society looks. So, the annual sales of 75 billion billion dollars. So think of Lava Jato, think of the, all the, the suitcases of money. <laughs> so uh, multiply that for like a million. That would be uh, the annual uh, sales for video games worldwide. Uh, over 65% sex of all people do play video games, electronic games, and I like this particular moment to ask uh, my audience, do you play video games? Raise your hands if you do. <laughs> yeah, and it's 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 kind of it's kind of uh, it's interesting because when I say video games, you might think of like a joystick, but many people say, okay, that's I can play on my on my mobile, I can play on my tablet. That's still video gaming, right? So do you play like uh, uh, Paciencia on your on your mobile solitaire, right? Do you play solitaire in your in your mobile? You you're playing video games, right? So I think everyone here plays at least. Uh, one game, right? So you're playing video games. And that's the majority of people. Uh, Call of Duty, have you ever heard of this game? It's like a first person shooting or FPS game. You you have a guy with a gun, you're like killing terrorists. <laughs> so that's a uh, very uh, current uh, topic, right? So you have Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. It's a franchise, so it's already the third game in the row, in the row right? And it's generated uh, uh, 400 million, over 400 million on the first day of, of sales. So ima can you imagine, I open my store and I have like, uh, you know, a shelf full of Call of Duty and then all of a sudden it's gone because people go berserk after this. So it's it's crazy and we, we kind of neglect the fact that it's so important. We, we don't like to 
you know, to accept that because we want our we wanted our students to be interested in books, right? We want them to come here and okay, let me buy another books, another book. But they want to buy video games, and that's what they they like, right? Every week. Three billion hours. Okay, if you sum up everyone, every single person playing their video games at home uh, competitively, you know, you have competitions for video games, and it's kind of a. Uh, nowadays, we have even professional athletes, uh, you know, game players. They are like a team, and they work out. You know, it's crazy. They work out together, so they they work out their wrists because they have to endure, you know, uh, many many hours on the computer playing video games. So they kind of uh, they have this uh, how do you call it like Pilates thing or something. It's crazy, but it's a reality, right? And they make millions uh, yearly. So uh, it's it's a it's a reality. We cannot deny that. <laughs> okay, let me see if you're if you're good guessers here. Uh, what's the average? Uh, age of a game player, in your opinion? <laughs> what? Eight? Eighty? Thirty-two. That's pretty close. Thirty. Okay, the average. So you can consider people that are eighty and people that are like two, <laughs> as young as two. Uh, they start playing video games. You know, I've seen babies with tablets in their hands playing like. Uh, pedagogical games or whatever. So uh, yeah, it's it, it's probably somewhere in between 30. And actually, I had the answer here is 34. So that's uh, it's a coincidence. Coincidentally, is my age. <laughs> uh, and y you know, think of people that are very old and people that are really young, and they all play video games. Now another interesting uh, stat for you guys. What's the percentage of women who are video game players? Because you know, there's if there's one thing, <laughs> there's a stereotype. If you think of a game player, you would probably picture me, right? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You would probably picture like a, a nerdy young guy, right? Uh, okay, is it true? I think, uh, in my opinion, I had that that uh, stereotype in my head too. But there are women, many, many women playing video games too. Uh, what do you think is the percentage? It's very low. Is it? Thirty. That's a good. That's a good guess. Yeah. Five. As, as little as five. <laughs> yeah. No. Actually, you're you're. Yeah, you're much closer now. It's it's kind of almost half, almost half, right? So you have 60% of game players, uh, male game players, and you have 40% uh, of female game players. So it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's very uh, similar the percentage. So it's it's not gender. It's not, it's not a gender uh, thing. You, uh, they might play different games. You know, my wife, <laughs> she plays those. Uh, every time I look at her, she has the tablet in her ha in her hands, and she's playing a, a dress up game with dolls. They're all in, the, in their underwear, and then she's dressed up, dressing up the dolls. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, but that's games, you know. They, they she, I, I I prefer those. Like, <laughs> but you know, it's, everyone has their favorite, right? <laughs> Uh, so uh, there's the percentage for you. Uh, video game sales in 2016. Okay, it's two years ago, but it's pretty recent. Uh, generated 10.5 billion. That's U.S. dollars. So it's probably 30, uh, 32 um, billion reais, right? Um, uh, between fifth grade and graduation, students will spend 10. 1080 hours in the classroom studying okay formally formally